Today I want to take a look at Power Apps Portal and how to automate the invitation process in bulk. When you're making a portal, you may want to invite third parties to register, sign up, and send out invitation codes. There is a native feature for doing that one at a time, but it doesn't really handle bulk scenarios or sending many invitations. It also just sort of sends the invitation code in the body of an email without a real easy way for people to click the link and pre-fill the form. So we're going to take a look at how we can automate. The two key pieces of the automation are going to be MS Flow and JavaScript. So if you have a diagram here, Power Apps Portal, and we have a table of contacts and invites that are part of the system. It comes with a starter portal. There's contacts and then there's invites. And we're trying to send out these invitation codes, right? That it has this uh, special ID number that only you can redeem. And that's where your third parties are going to fill things out. And we want them to register with the portal. Um, one part of that is going to be MS Flow. MS Flow is going to do two things. It's going to create the code and send an email. So this is going to be the create, and then here we have the email. On the final part, we are going to need some JavaScript on the client side. What's JavaScript going to do for us? It's going to fill in the code based on a URL parameter. So something in the URL is going to have the code, and then we're going to pre-fill the form so that people don't have to copy-paste it. That's where we're headed. That's the big picture goal. Wanted to give you guys a diagram. Here we are looking at Power Apps Portal. And if we click the sign in link in the top right, you can see the normal login display. Here you have a sign in tab, register tab, and a redeem invitation tab. That's the one we're going for. Redeem invitation, kind of a simple page. You put in the code and then you register. And it has a return URL up here of where to go when you're done with that. You may want to take people to a getting started page or something with content, text, images to help them learn how to use the system. But for our purposes, we want to pre-fill the invitation code. Now, being developers like our F12, we want to poke around and learn more about the system. Here we can see that we have a control on the page. It has a title. It has an ID called invitation code. That's the part we're going to use to make the pre-fill possible. We'll hang on to that for later. Coming over to the contacts table in portal management, you can see a list of contacts that are in the system, and we are able to create and send invite codes by clicking one row and then hit the create button. That's pretty cool, but we need to do more. We want to select multiple rows, and the minute we do that, our invitation button disappears. Kind of unfortunate. But a new button shows up, which is the one for flow, for automation. This is where we're going to get our bulk invitation, right? And this is where we're going to get automation for it, which includes sending out the email. So we'll click on our toolbar and we'll go for create a flow. On this screen, we're prompted for kind of a security permissions dialog. Do you want this to use Dataverse? Continue. All right, and here we have which environment and which type of record is being selected. Back over in our portal management app, you can see that it's a contact record and that our default environment should be up here next to the name. Yeah, we are definitely logged into the default environment. So we want to add a new step, and this is going to be from the Dataverse family, and we want to do add a new row to Dataverse. What we're trying to do is create an invitation. So we have to scroll through all the different entities from the default starter portal. We'll find the one that says invitations. We'll click on that. And it gives us the required fields. What do you have to have? What's the minimum spec for making an invite? Well, the first thing is the user's email. That's feeding in from the contact. Because remember, the gray block, the first block, is a contact block. The second green one is an invite. There are two types. You can do single or you can do bulk. We're going to choose single. And just for comparison, in the web portal, you can come over here and click invitation and click new, and you get the same thing. What's the name? What's the type? So this is the same sort of input that the entity requires on either side. But we need to know who this invite's going to. There's a security mechanism that an invite code pairs up with a particular user. We want to stay on top of that. So it's not just that we're making this invite and the name of it is an email address. This is kind of meaningless text. It doesn't really do that much. It's not functional. Down here, we have a far more important field. It's the invite contact 
from the contacts table. This is who we're sending the invite to. This is a security feature that I can redeem the invite code sent to me. You can redeem an invite code sent to you, but it can't just be that anybody uses any invitation code. This is where things go full circle and it actually does validation back to the original contact for matching things up. You know, if you forwarded a, an email with an invite code and some other person tried to use it, no dice, not going to work. That invite code is for you only. So to get there, we want to look at the pop-up for our fields, and we have an, a lot of different ID options. We want to pick out the contact ID. Now that's a GUID number for the contact record, and something that you can see by navigating the data uh, over here in the, the Power Apps uh, portal management. But we need to make it an OData syntax. And without getting too far in the weeds, it looks like this, where you're going to have the name of your portal, and then you're going to have contacts, and you're going to feed things in. So to get that value, take a look at your portal management link, and up here you're going to see a DNS name for what the header is, right? Then we have org followed by a number. We want to pair that up and match it, make sure everything's put together the same way. And so with that prefix matching the site that we're working on, we can come back over here, create flow, we've got a link, contacts, we've got a GUID number, and you can actually test it to go preview and see the JSON for a given contact. So here I might open up my active contacts, click on one to take a look, and check the network tab, do refresh, and I can see the batch records where the contact was sent through, and we have uh, GUID numbers for it. But yeah, while we're on the contact record and we hit the refresh button, the network tab captures a couple of different items. We really want this first batch one and then take a look at the response. We'll make it full screen <clears throat> where we can see it a little bit better. And we'll go ahead and take all of that text, paste it in a notepad, search for the word ID, Lo and behold, here it is, contact ID with a number, and we can take that back over to our browser in a fresh new tab and paste it in. So what this does is gives us a way of viewing a singular contact record. So it's the tenant for Dynamic CRM, because this is Power Apps Portal. It's API data version 9.1. Then we, we then have contacts as the table name, followed by the GUID number. And here in the body, you can see all of the different values for that particular record. This pattern holds true for everything that Dynamics CRM is doing. It holds true for all of Power Apps Portal. It's a pretty cool thing to know about. It's an OData record locator. And that's how we have to provide this particular input. So given that we have this very particular format, and we have kind of the contact ID number here without much else, there's a trigger body for contact ID. What we're going to need to do is make a concatenation expression. So concat is joining strings together one after another. OK, that could be handy. So here what we want to do is put a closing paren on the right. We want to prefix our URL on the left of how this needs to look. And the dynamic ID number will live in the middle. So what we end up with is something that it has this uh, reusable pattern about the trigger body with the entity contact ID altogether turns pink to validate. And the pattern that we're looking at is this, where we're concatenating the prefix of the URL, the ID in the middle, and then a little closing paren on the other side so that we get this pattern preserved kind of bookends, prefix and suffix, with the contact ID is going to live in the middle. That's the format you need. That's how you can provide a record lookup. We'll go ahead and hit save. And one thing I like to do in MS Flow is relabel the steps. You have these default headings. OK, it's a good start, but it's not really telling us what we want to do. I like to put a little bit of notes and parentheses there. So now we selected a record, we created an invite, super cool stuff. Now we need to go send email v2 to get the word out. 
we need to give this invitation to people. So in the dynamic pop-up, we'll use the primary email of the contact and we'll say welcome to starter portal. There we go. Uh, please click link below to register. Register now. Highlight that, click the hyperlink. We need to put in a target. That's our redeem invitation page. Okay, pretty cool, pretty cool. We need to give it the code and we need that to be easy to use. So I'm gonna put invite equals and we're gonna take that and just hit uh, okay. We'll come into the code editor where we can see a little bit under the hood. And here we wanna pick up this one. This is the magic from the prior step. And MS Flow is great because of the color coding. The green is the invitation. The gray was the contact. And the blue is gonna be the email. And all three come together to help us automate the process. So here we're putting the invitation code in the middle. Um, and we could even put something up here like dear expression, come over and click name, first name of the contact. You got all kinds of cool stuff you can do. You can put a thank you down here at the bottom, paragraph tags, bold, whatever formatting you'd like to do with your email to dress it up and make it more professional. You have a lot of HTML coding options. Now the final piece that we're missing is to redeem this invite. We want to pre-fill the form. If you guys remember from earlier in the demo, we have an invitation code HTML input. How are we going to make that pre-fill? How are we going to make this so that I can do invite equals one, two, three, and have it take it out of the URL and put it into the text box? The way we get there is with JavaScript. Coming into Power Apps Portal for the website management on the left, we'll see one option for our starter portal. We'll go ahead and open that up, and here we have some header, footer, root pages, different options available. We'll come into footer and see what we have. Currently, there's a little bit of code that just has an HTML snippet, not all that much going on. We're going to add to it. So here we have some JavaScript, and this is the prefill invite code. And just to make it easier to read, we'll color. There we go. That's better. So what we're doing here is if you're on the register page, we have a function to get a URL parameter to read it. The invite is going to be the URL parameter input. An invitation code is the HTML text box that we're going to put it into. We take this code block, we bring it over here, we put it into the page and hit save. Now when we reload the page to register with invite equals 123, we can see that invitation code is getting automatically pre-filled and that's what we want for the best user experience. Because the invitation codes are huge and we really don't want people typing those in or copy pasting them. It leads to headaches. They're not gonna get the whole thing copied correctly. And it's, yeah, far easier to support. If you take a giant invitation code like this, put it into your link, have it pre-fill automatically. And then all people have to do is hit the register button because we have JavaScript in the background that's pre-filling the page. And again, that was JavaScript we put in by going to the Websites tab on the left, coming into the Starter Portal, and modifying the footer. The footer is HTML. You can add a script tag and put JavaScript inside the HTML that if you're on the register page, it will pick up the invite code and put it into the text box. Automated, helps people, makes it easier to use. So here we have our flow. We have our JavaScript and we're ready to run a test. Okay, to test things out, we're going to highlight John Smith and we're going to do run. And actually, I'm going to highlight multiple records. All right, so here we have multiple records in our system. We're going to go to the toolbar, we're going to click flow, and then we're going to run the one that we have uh, public. All right, good stuff. So here under Run, we see Common Data Service button. You can rename this to anything you'd like. That's just the default. But we'll go ahead and click it to get things moving and execute our bulk invite. Ah, I went ahead and gave it a different name, so it's a little bit, a little more semantic as to what we're trying to do. So we'll click on Bulk Invite. 
it comes up. Are you sure you want to run the flow? Here's the permissions that it needs. Yep, there's our different permissions. We'll click the continue button and the run flow button and then click done. Back on the flow designer itself, if we come to the home page, you can see the flow run history. And that's on the bottom center of the screen. We'll open that up. And here, drilling into the flow run history, we can see green check marks in the top right corner for the different steps that this executed successfully. Here's the objects that were part of the output. And, and that's cool stuff because it actually does show you a whole lot about the environment, the GUIDs, the JavaScript, the JSON going back and forth. The contact ID is BC57. And it's just incredible the amount of detail it's available. Now we did select two records. So there's actually two different items on the history. And if we drill into the other one, same sort of things available. It's just going to be a different GUID number for the other contact. And here with our successful flow run history, we can drill into the different steps. Here's the one for add a new row, create invitation. So it's putting an item into the invitations table. We can see that was done successfully. And there's the OData syntax again with the tenant and the API data. But this one's actually to a different table. It's the ADX invitations table. So this is it creating an invitation record. And then here you can see all the outputs coming through which uh, I think is really cool because you can open this up, drill down. There's so many different fields. And I mean, the invitation actually has a lot of data that it's tracking. So we come over here to invitation code, ADX invitation code, this giant string here. That's the stuff we're trying to get. That's how we know it was successful. That's the code we need to share with our end user. So down here on the email step, same sort of thing. Welcome, dear John. Welcome to Starter at Portal. That's our pre-fill with the first name. Here's the concatenated link we made. Register is the page. Invite equals, and there's the code. So we've got the code. It's going to the correct person. It has their name in the HTML. You can format this message, add graphics to it, dress it up with HTML for a bulleted list, bold, anything you want to give them instructions on the portal. But the bottom line is we're getting the link to the right people. And over here, you can see the email message coming through. And if we hover on the register now, there's that same beautiful invite code. That's the part we're trying to get. Automate the invitation. Automate creating it automate the email, automate the user experience of filling in the form. We're automating at three key points. We make the invite by using flow. We send the invite out with flow. And then we take the invite code and we put it into the form using JavaScript. So with all this invitation automation in place, you're now at a spot where you can invite hundreds or even thousands of people to your portal. They can easily register. And I think this really takes Power Apps Portal and Flow to the next level, that coming in here and clicking send invite one at a time really is a limiting experience. And we want to do this at quantity at high scale. And this gives you guys all of the building blocks you need to make that possible. Thanks for watching.